is regular eight film, and you can see it's a little bit thicker than the Super Eight, right? Now the reason for that is, is when in the 50s, 40s and 50s, this is actually 16 millimeter film. What you would do is you have a camera like this. This is a this is a regular eight camera. And you load this in, and you have to thread it yourself. You basically have to do this in kind of a dark room, right? Because this is this film, if you expose this to light, you're gonna ruin it. You go out, wind it up. I'm filming, filming, filming at 18 frames per second. There's 25 feet on that roll. It goes out at about a minute and a half, right? So a minute and a half worth of shooting. I gotta run back inside. I gotta go in the bathroom. I gotta open this up. I gotta change the roll that went through one way, okay? It went through once, but all it did was expose on one side of that film. I have to flip it, and I'm going to expose the other side. Then when I send this out, I have to send this to a photo lab. I send it out, and when they develop this, they put it through a special machine that cuts that film in half. They splice it together onto a full roll like this, right? It's kind of a, a process to get two and a half minutes worth of film. Not a lot of people have the patience or the, or the wherewithal to really spend that much time to do that. So what Super 8 did was they took a whole 50 foot roll and put it in a cartridge, right? In the 60s, this was like revolutionary. But now I'm able to just, that's it. And I'm ready to shoot. I also don't have to wind my camera. What happened was, when I wind my camera, I have about 15 or 20 seconds worth of shooting time. So if I'm shooting and I, and let's say my kid is running around and doing something funny and great and I'm shooting and all of a sudden he's getting ready to jump in the pool and boom, I run out of, it, it runs out of winding, right? And I miss that shot. So then I have to stop and wind and tell him to get out of the pool and run again because we're going to do it this time. Now, with Super 8 cameras, I have the whole 50 feet roll. I have batteries, right? And I can just shoot until my, until it runs out of film, right? I can shoot basically at 18. That's 18 frames per second. That's generally movement, right? Now, with this camera, I could also shoot 24. A little bit faster, right? Now, when you shoot faster, motion goes slower, right? Now on this camera, I could shoot slow motion by holding down this button. Now it's exposing my film at a very high rate of speed, right? At that rate, because I exposed so many frames while they were running, that it's going to, it's going to look like slow motion. A small gate. Uh, has an aesthetic to it. It's super grainy. Uh, but in fact, what's happening now is the, is the very aesthetic of that, of it being like not as good or, or really grainy is what draws people to it now. Even if something is shot digitally with no film at all, they, the last step in the process is to give it a warm film look. Do you remember, the was it the first chapter of The Hobbit that was like hyper, it was 48 frames a second. It was like all digital. And people were complaining about that, that it looked too clear, too realistic. It was getting to the point where it, w it was pushing the reality to pretty much what the human eye can discern. And for a lot of people who saw that, it was really unpleasing. Really? They, they want that kind of warm, softer, gentler look that you see it 99% of the movies right. you go to. And Peter Jackson did back off on that. They can't really replicate with filters. Um, they try. You know, you, you see it, software manufacturers are doing it. Um, you can see it in editing programs. It's not quite the real thing, though. And I think that's why this survives. In 
a certain audience or a certain segment of your audience is going to signify home movies. And I think people who buy vinyl, I mean, isn't part of the appeal of vinyl the imperfections, like the occasional little pop? Right. Old people like me just get this warm, fuzzy feeling because it reminds us of our childhood. It's something that you would not relate to. Right. One of the things that helps us to identify old film is um, taking images right off the screen. These obviously have titles, so they're identifiable. It'll help remind me what we were what we were looking at. You know, there's just something comforting about that. You know, one of the more uh, interesting cultural touch points of Super 8 would be the Kennedy assassination, and that is exactly the nostalgia effect that like when you see that grainy footage you know he shot it 200 yards away but yeah so that's that would be notable uh some notable super eight uh, uh cultural things